Hi everyone and welcome to the computational chemistry tutorials. The aim of this tutorial is to make the idea of the resolutions of the protein structures in PDB clear to new students because usual new students are confusing between the high and low resolution structure. So I prepared this five or six slides to make this idea clear. What I mean by confusion is usually or most of the students, the new students are confusing for example, three angstrom structure would to be better than one angstrom structure, thinking that the higher this number, the better the structure, but the story is completely the opposite. And if you look at this structure, you will notice that this is the best one. This is the best one that shows the more fine details here, while this one is just showing a less uh, accurate structure or less detailed structure, to be precise. So. To understand this, we need to know how we get this PDB, uh, or these structures to PDB. Most of the structures are uh, determined by X-rays. And the protocol for X-ray is just the crystallographers obtain a crystal from a protein after purifying it. And then which is, I mean, very hard. I mean, it's not that straightforward process. And all of the subsequent steps are dependent on the quality of the uh, crystals, uh, crystal that the, they are getting from the protein solution. So after that, they uh, allow an X-ray beam to, to pass through the structure. And then, as you know from basic physics, this will cause we can obtain a diffraction pattern. And then they use this diffraction pattern to build an electron density map. And then they do some fitting and refinement. And then... They end up with an atomic model, and as I said, they do refi uh, refinement multiple times until they they are uh, certain or uh, or sure about their, their atomistic models, and then they save what they have into a file format, which is the PDB that all of us know. So that is the process. There are uh, different methods like uh, NMR or CRAM to, to determine protein structures, but the different method is not the the the, typo, uh, the topic of this video. So this is one of the methods that we can get our structure. So depending on the, as I said, on the crystal obtained from the solution or the quality of handling this process, you end up with a, uh, a high accurate, high resolution structure or medium resolution structure or low resolution structure. And crystallographers are honest and they tell you everything here in, in the PDB format. So, what does we mean by uh, resolution? So resolution in, in this case is the distance under which or uh, the distance or the minimum distance uh, the two uh, uh, objects are observable. I mean, below this distance, they will look like just single object. So if this is a poor structure, five angstrom, you just, you just see uh, a single uh, object here and if you uh, go lower this distance zoom in you will just see a single thing or uh, the same here for 3.5 but it is better but in 0.5 angstrom structure you can go into details you can zoom in till the distance as low as uh, 0.5 angstrom so it is the distance corresponding to the smallest observable feature okay I hope I made it clear. Yeah, cool. So how we evaluate our structures. This is a quick guide to evaluate the structure. A 1.5 or a 1.2 is an excellent structure because the backbone and most of the side chains are clear. 2.5 is good. 3.5 is okay. 5 is poor structure because backbone mostly clear but the side chains are not clear and as a protein chemist mostly all the critical stuff are done or most of the critical stuff are related with the protein side chains like binding or orientation somehow or gating flipping so i don't think uh, a five angstrom structure would be beneficial for your work yeah and as i said they uh they save everything into the pdb file format that we already discussed before in our videos but before I close this presentation, I want to make you sure that you know what does the occupancy and beta factor means. 
because everything here is clear they have the atom numbers and the uh, amino acid name or chain name and the coordinates but then you have two numbers that you should know what does these two numbers mean so the first one is or the second one here is called beta factor or the temperature factor and it is describes the displacement of the atomic position from the average so flexible part of the protein gonna have higher beta factors but while the core atoms gonna have lower beta factors but in general a very high temperature factor or, or, or sorry temperature value or beta factor uh, makes the uh, the structure it makes you less confident with the quality of your structure and in general uh, this beta factor is usually used to visualize proteins to see which part is flexible and which part is uh, rigid so as I said uh, this is a very uh, traditional coloring method so you will have the the one that has higher temperature factor red and the one that has lower temperature factors are blue so here you see the flexible parts at the surface of, of the protein but once the ones or the hydrophobic ones in the core are rigid so it's a very very popular coloring method of the protein it has a way to calculate a simple equation to calculate from the average so you see uh, you're calculating the displacement or the average displacement for each atom from the average displacement of all atoms okay so the second one is the occupancy because uh, as, I, as I said here, they, they, they do some uh, refinement in, in, in the model because sometimes there are side chains that has different orientations uh, during this process. So they are not sure uh, whether it should be here all the time or, or should be in another, in another place or could be there is a you know, drug binding to the protein. It binds with some orientation sometimes, but it binds by another orientation sometimes. So the, the occupancy is kind of the fraction of time at which the, the atom at a specific place in the model. So if, the, if it stays at the same place during all the time, they assign an occupancy of one. So it means that 100% of the time or 100% of the molecule is at this place all the time. And uh, the, the, the high quality structure usually will have, uh, usually will have occupancy with one in all of the atoms but if this side chain or of the of or if this part of molecule is changing its orientation or conformation like 50 percent in that conformation or 50 percent in that conformation so you're going to have here uh 0.5 occupancy yeah so i hope i made it clear i haven't made any videos for a long time so i lost my my motivation to make some videos so i said i come up with an easy topic to get back to or really interesting topics but this one is quite basic so to sum up quickly is structure with a one angstrom structure will be better than 100 angstrom structure and everything in this process is dependent on the quality of the crystal structure or the crystal that you get from your protein samples and uh, last thing, the temperature is uh, a reflection of the flexibility of the protein or the, the static image of the protein. So high beta factor, high temperature factor means high flexible parts, but low ones here will be more rigid or less flexible. And the occupancy is the fraction of time at which the part of the molecule at that orientation or conformation so it, 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 it has always the sum of one so it's like 100 percent so uh, that's it and see you in the next video i hope i will make it closer it has been 40 days since my last video but i wish i can make some of them very soon thank you